Michael here. A uh, great thing about Swat is that it's open source. So it means you can change the code to get better results in your study area. So this has been done in a lot of studies. But it's not an easy task to do. So first thing is you need to know really know programming. And when you make the change, you want to make sure you only change the part you need to change, but never touch other parts. The second one is, uh, after you make the change, you really want to, um, to test your modified version. And you want to show other people, say, I really get better results with my, in my modified version. And uh, as you know that there are a lot of outputs in the SWOT model, to compare all the models in different versions is not an easy task. But don't even worry, so the SWOT viewer will give you all the tools you need to compare almost all the SWOT outputs. So in this video I will show you the comparison function in SWOT viewer. So I don't have any modified version here, so I will just use two different uh, SWOT versions for this example. So let's get started. Alright, so what I have here is I have a simple model, and uh, for this model I only have one scenario, it's the default scenario, and for this scenario I have run both SWOT 627 and SWOT 664. So I have the model for monthly and monthly here. So to run these two models, basically you need to do is you want to select the scenario and uh, on the right you have a, a list to give you the options, the a model engine you can use here. So you can see you have SWOT 488 setting that's SWOT 2005 and also you have different other versions. So in this demo, I've used the 627 and the 668, 664, sorry. Um, and you may have a question to say, oh, how can I add my uh, modified version SWOT into this list? So uh, basically, um, I it's another topic. I will add this topic, cover that topic in another video. So basically, you need to uh, uh, make sure your modified version is in the same pla the same framework in the um, SWOT viewer. All right. So right now we have this results from these two versions. Basically, what we can do is we can use the compare function uh, in the SWOT viewer to compare uh, the results from this version and this version. So let's start it from the summary results. Let's go back to go into the uh, watershed section in this uh, explorer here. So after I go to watershed section here, you can see I go into the daily, monthly, yearly watershed results. Basically, it gives you uh, this one will give you the monthly results for these all these uh, four variables. Um, so right now showing here is the uh, sediment yield for the year 2000, you can see here. Um, to use the compare function, um, what we have in the viewer here is you have this section called compare base. And the default uh, option here, selection, is don't compare. It means it only shows the result from this given uh, uh, run, this from this given engine. Um, but right now we have two NG runs for the same scenario. So we, uh, what we what we can so basically we can compare uh, this one to this one. Uh, so let's we let's select this menu here. You can see there's another option called default SWOT uh, six six four. Uh, if I change to this option, you can see there will be two uh, graph here. One is in red color, another in blue. So basically, the red color here is the my current uh, simulation run. So in this case, will be the SWOT 627. 
and uh, the blue ones will be the compared uh, simulation run. So in this case, will be SWOT 664. So also what we can do is you can put your mouse on top of this point. You can see they give a two tip tell you uh, this will be the sediment and from SWOT 664 and the number will be that number. And if you go to the right, uh, the red one here, you can see is SWOT 627. Um, also that's the graph here. You can compare uh, the, you know, the graph also there. If you go right, you have the table here. So basically you have uh, the dates and you have another two columns for the different uh, uh, engine runs. So first column is for the SWOT 627 and the second column is for the 664. Uh, so basically you have this graph showing different, uh, different engine runs also in the table also showing different engine runs. So that's for the watershed summary results. So what about uh, uh, sub-basin reach and other results? So let's go to the sub-basin part. So, um, so what you can see here for the sub-basin, what we're showing here still is the, um, a, I will go to the sediment uh, uh, yield here and I will use the year 2000. And also you can see we have the same compare with option here. The default is still is don't compare. Uh, but we will switch to default SWOT 664. Let's see what will happen. So same again, you can see on the bottom here, we have two graphs. One is red, red is for current simulation run. And the blue one is for the compared simulation run. So if, if you go to on the right, you have the chart data, you will have two columns. So first column will be for 627, and the second column will be for version 664. Uh, also in the state, uh, state bar here, it will train to compare the two uh, graph data. So you can see 627 and 664. The R square will be 0 0.99 and uh, uh, the SE value will be 0 0.9790. It's very close, I mean, but still there are some slightly different. Um, I mean, I, I don't know why uh, these two versions have uh, this difference here, um, but you can see that's how you can uh, compare this difference. Uh, so that's for sub basin. So you can use same uh, same way to compare uh, the HRU, the reach, the reservoir, and um, and uh, there is also another uh, uh, compare function in this uh, viewer. Uh, we call in the section there's a section called difference uh, section. So basically, this will compare uh, all the SWOT components uh, using the R square. Um, you can see on the top here, you have different uh, uh, SWOT component tabs. So you have HIU, you have Subbasin, you have Rich, and you have Redmer. So like, and also here you, you can have options to select different runs. Because right now we only have another, we only have two runs, so, so it will select this one by default. So let's uh, use the Subbasin example. If we switch to Subbasin, you can see here it will list all the available results from the Subbasin. And let's select same like sediment EU here. And if we click this one, so you can see uh, in this bottom here, basically what they will do is they will go through all the Subbasin. So right now I have 38 Subbasin, right? So for each of the Subbasin, I will compare the, uh, the sediment yield from this uh, simulation run and this simulation run. So that's two time series, right? So based on the two time series, the R square will be calculated. And the results will be on the red table here, also showing on this graph here. So you can see here uh, in the table, you have for sub basin one, the R square is 0.97. And for the subbasin 2, you have R square 0.98. So again, it's, um, 
and it's very close to one, but uh, still uh, there, a lot, there, there are some slightly difference there. So in the table here, you can sort them and find out which one is uh, as the lowest R square is this one, uh, sub basin 37. Also in this graph here, bar chart here, you can uh, um, kind of see uh, uh, how close this uh, uh, R square close to one. So that's how you find out which uh, which subbasin or which ridge will have uh, the largest difference. Uh, for example, if we switch to ridge, and uh, if we want to go to sediment out, so you can see uh, for all the ridge, different ridge here. Uh, you can see if we start here, you can see ridge uh, 37. The R square is just uh, point uh, one nine, so it's very low and there are a lot of difference there so uh, in that case basically you really need to link in, look into that of oh, how very what which uh, change has caused this and if that makes sense or not right so it really help you to uh, to test your uh, modified version uh, so you don't want to add some unnecessary change to your code right so that will mess up see, mess up uh, everything you don't want to do that so the last one for the comparison is in the performance so here I have uh, four performance here um, so one is uh, two of them are rich and the other two is for the reservoir um, let's look into the rich 12 and its flow um, if we go into the red part you have the all year one and you have the compare so this in the compare is where you want to use to compare uh, to see uh, which model will get better uh, performance, right? So, so again, the default will be don't compare and if we switch to SWAT 664 here, okay, so you can see um, for a different year and uh, uh, the Performance right now, I think my selection is the SE value. So for each year, the SE value will be showing uh, in different column. Six here is six twenty seven. Here is six sixty four. So it's a table, and also at the bottom here, you also have uh, the different chart in different color. You can see actually right now we have three uh, graph here. So um, but so you can see. The red one is below the blue one because they are um, they are very close, right? Uh, not the exact same, but very close. And also we have the green one, which is for the observed data. Um, so again, you can start the table and uh, kind of to see uh, which one uh, have the better one, which one is uh, is not that good. So basically, you also can compare. Uh, the performance of the of the two model. Um, I think this way this covers all the comparison uh, function in the SWOT viewer. Basically, you can uh, compare uh, almost all the results uh, in in this viewer. So it includes the summary in the bot chat section and uh, the time series in the HRU section, in the submission section, reach section, and the red world function uh, section. Also, we have a dedicated difference uh, section to do the comparison. Basically, it will uh, run through all the time series and to compare, um, to using as a square to, as an indicator to compare um, the two uh, time series from the 2D simulation run. So you want to, um, for the part you change, so you really want to uh, probably have, have some this, uh, have some change, right? But for some part you don't want to change, so you really want to make sure your R square is very close to one. So if you see something is, uh, uh, is, is not uh, close to one, you really want to make sure uh, that makes sense. Also in the performance, we also have the comparison uh, for the performance uh, indicator, different indicator here. Um, so you can see um, which model run will have the better performance. So with this comparison, 
uh, after you have done this comparison, you will have more confidence in your uh, modified version. And uh, also, if it's some of the tools, you can uh, uh, demonstrate your uh, effectiveness of your change to, to the model to, to show other people say, oh, I make this change and that's my performance gain. And uh, so it's better for you guys to uh, also use this change for your study area. In this video, I talk about the comparison function in SWOT Viewer. It will really help you to uh, develop and demonstrate your uh, own modified SWOT versions. Uh, if you like the video, uh, please give, feel free to give a thumb up and subscribe my uh, channel. Uh, thanks for watching and I will see you in next one.